Look at that range of mo. Oh, they got my beard. Oh, they got. Oh, they got. Oh, they got my mouth. Oh no. Oh, no. oh they got my beard. What are you doing? Uh, I'm coming around. I'm coming around. Oh, what, are you, I'm coming around. what are you doing? I don't know. I'm fucking having fun. Feeling out my range of motion for this fucking show. So that way I know how far I can move without giving them too much. Oh, they got, they got an ear. Yo, the ear fetishists out there. Yeah, Yo, the ear fetishists. That's all I'm going to give you. Now get the fuck out. <laughs> okay, AJ. Yeah. What's worse? Huh. Necrophilia or bestiality? Is this a serious question? Yes. Okay. Um, necrophilia or bestiality, which one's worse? Uh, bestiality. I would rather want a world where people are fucking dead bodies than fucking living creatures. Even humans? I mean, they're dead humans, so they're no longer really humans. They're just matter. Yeah, it's not like they really care what happens to their body after they die. Dude, in fact, you know what? How about this? When I die... I'll, I can offer up my dead body to a necrophiliac, so that way he doesn't have to go out and grave rob or anything. He can just fuck my body, because I don't care. I'll be dead. Yo, what if somebody made, like, a necro brothel? Like, kept bodies on ice, Holy but, like, shit. got them donated for, like, charity? And this is the only reasonable argument for anarcho-capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> Complete, complete, just fuck it. <laughs> Let's start the show. Yeah. See you there. Warning, all Podunk Punk's content on all social media videos and websites are intended for your entertainment. However, if you are the type who is easily offended, please find the nearest plastic bag and promptly drape it over your head. We engage in satire, give crude commentary, curse, and, well, you get the gist. We're not saints. We're the Podunk Punks. And if you like our shit, be sure to subscribe. Interior Crocodile Alligator. I drive a Chevrolet movie theater. Interior Crocodile Alligator. I drive a Chevrolet movie theater. What up? What the fuck is up? What up? Yo. Yo. So, go ahead and say it. <laughs> I'm Lord Mike Bedlam. And I'm Scowling Out. And we are not saints. We are the Podunk Punks. Punks. And we are back again. It's been a long time, everybody. We've had, We're sorry. We've had some doo-doo. Yeah, we had some a, a lot of shit go down. We've been trying to uh, follow Earthworm Von Doom and Emergent Tyrant and all of their endeavors. I went on tour. Yeah, Mike went like, on tour. For like two days. Uh, with <laughs> St. Bubo. Yes. Yes. Uh, he gives his condolences to... Humanity. All the families that lost because of his practices. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah, what else? Not um, really much, I mean. Other than that, we've just been uh, trying to, uh, really not let life get in the way too, too much of all of our other hobbies, because we haven't mm -hmm. been focusing on a lot. I've been trying to focus on my music more lately. Um, I've been focusing a lot on writing. Yeah, so, we're, we, we've, we've dispersed our hobbies a little bit, and now we're ready to kind of refocus on this. Yeah. Anyway. Also, Odium's coming out with an album. Yeah. It's gonna be redonk. Sooner or later. Senior or later. Senior or later. Um, we hate to come back to such a depressive fucking uh, setting here, but something terrible happened over the uh, time that we didn't have any shows. What happened, AJ? So... <laughs> A band's front man died. This band was a big band uh, that meant a lot to a lot of people just because of how, you know, how much of a fresh twist they put on to metal music. Tenger Calvary. Tenger. Uh, their front man died at 29. That fucking sucks. Um, we got an article from Billboard written by... I mean, 29 is pretty fucking young. young. Yeah, we got an article written by Kirsten Sp I thought you were going to say Kirsten Stewart. Yeah. Um, Nature Gangan by Gal. Gang <laughs> Gangan by Gal. Gangan by Gal. Nature yeah. Gangan by Gal. Nature Gangan by Gal. Um, multi instrumentalist and frontman of Mongolian folk metal collective Tenger Calvary has died at age 29. Billboard can confirm. Oh, no. The circumstances surrounding his death are unclear. 
but in a statement released through Metal Sucks, his bandmates, quote, grew suspicious when he did not show up for a pre-show rehearsal last weekend. They explained, we also had a video shoot scheduled, so for him to miss that was cause for suspicion. We had been collaborating with friends of his in Austin since that time. Mm. Full statement reads, it is with deep sadness and shock that we must share the news that nature's passed away. Nature's greatest goal in life was to unite the people of all backgrounds through community and through music. He was also an advocate for mental health and encouraged everyone from friends to total strangers to persist through their struggles. Though we have lost a dear friend and great artist, uh, we know that his music will live on and continue to help us find our common ground and find our strength despite adversity. Please respect the privacy of nature's family during his painful time. May the eternal blue sky find him at peace. That probably means he killed himself. Yeah, I mean, if he was really, really into, you know, like, mental health, support and everything like that. I'm not saying that everyone who is has suffered through depression, but I mean, there's a good chance that since that was a major focus uh, you know, uh, at the forefront of his mind that he was also suffering from mental illness himself. Yeah, I... I there's a good chance. It's a pretty pretty solid chance. Usually people fight for that the hardest when it's most relevant to them. I want to know why my Firefox is so small. Maybe it's because I'm going through a very small TV. Continue. Uh, but, um, uh, we have a buddy um, who... They Victus Promotions. Yeah, Evan Hurst, he uh, he took it to heart. He definitely did. Yeah, he really liked the band, yeah. so, I mean, we're going to go ahead and let him say his piece and kind of react along with him. Yeah, I'm going to pull that up so that only he's shown. We'll just play through it. There we go. There's a, you know, there's a lot to be said about the situation, man. It's, um, it's rough. You know, nature was a very, very, very kind, caring, considerate human being and, uh, just a genuine soul, honestly. Um, as a musician alone, I mean, he did this, that, and the other thing. I mean, it was, the, the man did a shitload musically. So, um, for, for, you know, his passing, just on that notion alone is sad. It's devastating because, um, despite not getting, you know, the recognition that say, you know, fucking Iron Maiden or Metallica, you know, he wasn't that. He wasn't that big, but he was big enough, especially in his respective community, that, um, yeah, I mean, his, his passing touched a lot of people. And, um, you know, not, not even just that, but he was an advocate for mental health. He, um, He's, he supported anyone that was going through shit. You know, I had my brushes, you know, where I'd hit him up. I wanted to check on how he was doing. You know, it was little things here and there. I wanted to tell him, you know, how, uh, instrumental he was. Is that the right word to use? Fuck it. I'm using it anyway. Um, in kind of shaping my view on metal because, you know, I didn't really know what folk metal was back in 2012, 2013 when I first got into Tanker Cavalry. Um, and, if you're going uh, to get into folk metal, this mind. is the band to do it through. Yeah, like most, like I was gonna, I didn't want to like interrupt and say, but like the for anybody who hasn't really listened to them before, he, they're kind of like a Japanese folk metal kind of thing. Like they use the old school Japanese instruments and and they're like it, groove metal, great. like modern yeah. groove metal with like the the ancient Japanese kind of tinge. It kind of sucks that I literally just heard of them like right after he passed away. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know he passed away. Yeah. Seven. Let's let Evan make his eyes both to the fact that folk metal was a thing and that it wasn't just a European thing. It was, you know, there were musicians from Asia. There's musicians, you know, from Russia. There's musicians from, you Can know. Can you the... imagine what Russian folk metal would be like? That's I've never, nuts. yeah, I've never heard Russian folk metal before, but that sounds like it would be pretty dope. We should look some up after this. Yeah, let's see. look look up a band while this is going on. Right. Middle East, even there, there's there's musicians from all over the world that do folk metal as a genre. It's their it's their thing. It's their shtick, and it's uh, so he his music kind of introduced me to that. But on a more personal level, you know, I had my, my brush with him at Yule Fest. I met him, um, said, hey, he was very genuine, very nice, very uh, understanding of a starstruck 21-year-old that didn't know how to how to um, handle meeting somebody that, you know, said starstruck 21-year-old had 
followed for as long as I have. Um, and unfortunately, I know I'm going to kick myself, you know, for a very long time that I wasn't able to stay for that show because I went to, uh, I, I, I was on with Earthburn Von Doom and I was promoting their music video shoot at Pause it. Raven Inn that night. Oop. Um, ah, okay. so, sorry, Evan. What? Don't feel bad at all because you know damn well that Tender Calvary, Tenger Calvary, however you pronounce it, the front man would have wanted you to do something music related. Yeah, especially if it's to help out your local friends. Yeah, he would have been like, dude, you know, honestly, my funeral, whatever, it's all good. Fucking skip out on it. Go help your buddies. That's way more important to the music scene. Fucking elevate those people. You know, know, Earthworm Von Doom has a song about uh, mental health. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I was God. upset, you know, after the fact. I was like, oh, wow, well, shit, I missed one of my uh, favorite bands. That sucks. But then I found out that, uh, you know, Evan and Sarah, um, through Maryland Folk Metal Fest, and obviously Second Guard, and so many other projects, were bringing them down for the headlining slot on Folk Metal Fest, and I was really excited about that. It was, uh, it was like, oh, shit, here we go. It. I get to fucking oh, see them. Definitely. And, um, there's a... There's a- uh, you know, never mind. You know, as we're closing in time. on it. All right, so that was this first part of it. I'm gonna keep playing, but um, you know, it's it's really nice to see. Like, here's here's the thing: is like, you know, you can't really be too upset about about his passing. Kind of like you can't really be too upset about uh, Chester Bennington's passing, because like, yes, they did a lot for a lot of people, and but they're gonna be remembered through their music and that's what they wanted and you know like yeah we're not going to hear anything from them anymore but I mean like look at Nirvana you know like Nirvana is still a household name and Cobain's been dead for like 20 years now Mm -hmm. that's the case with a lot of bands yeah I mean the only way to be immortal is through the shit that you leave behind well like not 20 years but you know what I mean yeah, but that's the only way anyone can achieve immortality, truly, is by leaving enough things behind that stay with people long enough. And, you know, the only way to keep people alive through generations is in your fucking memories, you know? One thing that, like, gets me is when people talk about how, like... Hold on, let me put let me put us up if we're going to start talking. Um, one thing that really gets me is, like, how people can get so uptight about people with mental health... And then they call them mental health issues. Yeah, mental health issues. Yeah, my bad. Like people, people that have mental health health issues, and then they go and do you know they kill themselves, and then they're like, well, they're a hypocrite, you know, like like Robin Williams. Like Robin Williams did a bunch of stuff for depression, for depression, Mm -hmm. like charity events and anti suicide stuff, and then he committed suicide. People called him a hypocrite for it. That's the you know, and it's like fucking shit that I've ever heard. Yeah, of it's life. it's like people. I don't think people really understand how powerful mental health problems can be, especially even if you have everything, you can still have these problems. What do you do when the only tool that you have, or well, the most important tool that you have, because without it, we'd just be a fucking sea sponge or something mm-hmm. like. What do you do when the fundamental tool from which all of your other senses sprout, the thing through which you perceive your entire reality, is fundamentally fucking broken? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Like, can you imagine the sense of fucking hopelessness a person's got to have when they know their only fucking tool that they have for perceiving the fucking world is fundamentally, like, just fucked up? Yeah. You're right. Uh, and for people to rub it in and be like, well, he's a fucking hypocrite because he fucking kid. It's like, no, he didn't want anyone else to feel what he was going through. And what he was personally going through was too powerful for mm-hmm. other people. It might not be that powerful yet, and you can nip it in the bud by getting help. Exactly. And, like, just just the fact people would go that far um, against no a legend. Empathy. You know, against a legend. You know, mm-hmm. like, a, like... He did so much for people, and and he put other people before himself. And then the one time he put himself before people that made sense to him, he's a hypocrite. You know, I don't know. Like I'm not I'm not condoning I'm not I'm not condoning fucking killing yourself. Mm-hmm. Like you know whatever. I'm just saying that like 
when he finally felt like he was going to do something for himself that mattered, he's a hypocrite. But, I mean, as wrong as that thought could be. Mm. You know, like, everybody loved Robin Williams. Yeah. But, but, like, we're not talking about Robin Williams. We're just talking about, like, health gen- health problems in general. You can't, you can't call somebody a pussy or call somebody a hypocrite for killing themselves when they talk against killing people. Or killing again, killing themselves. I mean, it's like this. It's like, are you going to call a fucking cancer patient a pussy because you know they got fed up with feeling like absolute garbage and sick and fucking can't eat, can't sleep, can't do anything, so they just give up and want to fucking pull the plug or mm-hmm. something? You know, like, you really going to call them a pussy? Yeah, exactly. Really? Like, like, I hope you go through the same fucking thing so that way people can call you a pussy and you can know exactly how the fuck it feels. Anyway, okay, hold on, my 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 screens are fucked up because like. I have to go left to go right. I have to go right to go left. Whatever. Whatever. News. Yeah, there we go. All right. Well, Con- damn. Yeah, uh, continue, Evan. Evan's going to be on the show sooner or later. We just haven't had a chance to, like, set something up with him. He's a cool guy. Awesome. I like Evan. He's he's pretty cool. Uh, oh. Um, um, through Maryland Folk Metal Fest and, obviously, Second Guard and so many other projects. Second Guard. We're shit. bringing them down. Second Guard's pretty good for the headlining slot on Folk Metal Fest, and I was really excited about that. It was, uh, it was like, oh, shit, here we go. I get to fucking see him. And, um, you know, as we were closing in on it, you know, uh, I come home from work, you know, and I, 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 the first thing I see is that Nature G was, was found dead. Um, it didn't take, you know, a whole lot for anyone to be, you know, for anyone to say, oh, well, I think we all know what happened. Yeah. Um, That's what I was going to say. also don't want to make the assumption. Um, because there has been no official announcement to my knowledge. And it would be I disrespectful. I couldn't find anything. Yeah, I, I couldn't. Happened. What, you know, you know, what, what, uh, he passed from. But it, it's, um, to say, bet to say we, we can probably guess. Um, so. I mean, Nature was one of a fucking kind. He was a great guy. He was a great musician, and uh, he's going to be missed. You know, not just by me, but by the metal community, by fans of his projects, both his solo project and Tanger Cavalry. Um, and it sucks. It really fucking sucks. But um, you know, I do want to end with you know another note of a much more broad, personal level of um, if you're struggling with anything, whomever you may be. Don't be afraid to get help. Because, I mean, despite nature being gone, you know, I mean, the article that he, that he, uh, he wrote about, or the quotes that he made, the interview he gave about him almost ending his life sitting on top of a building and, uh, two cops happened to find him and they asked him what he was doing there. And he realized in that moment that he wanted to live. Um, so he got help and he came back, brought tanker cavalry back after breaking them up. And, um, you know, became a true powerhouse, especially in, you know, the closing, um, the closing run of the band's existence. And, um, so, you know, if you are struggling with mental health, any, any kind of mental health issues, please don't be afraid to get help. Um, see, that's a, that, I mean, Evan's right. Like if you, if you are scared to talk to anybody, like, or if you have no one to talk to. Or if you have no one to talk to, I mean, like, despite what a lot of people say, you can find online communities to talk to people that have the same problems. And you know you what? Know? And, and, like, there's nothing wrong with going to a psychiatrist as much as, like, as much as I think psychiatrists are just a waste of fucking time. Uh, it's easy to say that, but they're there for a reason. I understand. Well, that's the thing. I know. I understand they're there for a reason, but like, I just don't. I don't want to give money. I don't understand giving money to somebody that's already going to tell you something you already know. <laughs> but sometimes people need that, though. Sometimes that positive reinforcement. Sometimes no one has anyone else in their lives to tell them the things that they to reinforce. You know, like we all have figures in our lives that reinforce the things that we do like yeah dude fucking go out and do it yeah dude fucking write that fucking story dude that's a good fucking story hell yeah you know or you know why aren't you writing that story you know fucking why don't you do this 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 and this that way you can get around to writing that story they know all of these things 
But when you don't have a supportive figure in your life telling you those things, it can really fucking suck. Like, you don't want to do them because you're not, there's no one championing you along the way telling you, like, reassuring you what you're doing is worthwhile. But regardless, though, don't, don't, don't be afraid to try and find some help if you, you know, if you're feeling, for lack of a better term, down in the dumps. This is a very touchy topic, but personally, you know, I've been, I've been, dealing with depression since I was like a teenager so it's 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 not fun and it really does take a lot of energy to not only hide but try to balance dude it takes everything out of you like you don't want to wake up in the mornings and when you want to wake up and get the fuck out of bed you're too tired too and you know depression keeps you up at night and it makes you get less deep sleep and it wakes you up early and you know, it, it fucks your whole shit up it fucks with your appetite <coughs> don't eat right you know you might eat too much you might eat not at all you might not have an appetite you know see and the, but Evan's right if you feel like if you feel like you need to talk to somebody don't be afraid to talk to anybody I feel like a major thing when you go online Everything is so fucking hostile. Like, most people's... When you think of online, what do you think? You think YouTube, you think Facebook, you think, like, the major sites. And those major sites are riddled with, like, awful shit. Like, they are the absolute last places anyone should go for any fucking... Like, some Facebook groups, maybe, are okay, whatever. But you gotta be so fucking cautious on those major social media websites. You actually have to go and find a real mental health form that's moderated by a doctor or something. I agree. I just think that, like, they're... Okay. I mean, support groups can... Don't have to have, like, a doctor as the as the host. You know what I mean? So, like, why... Like, if you go to certain communities, like, on Reddit and stuff like that, like, there's suicide communities on Reddit that... Not only, like, there are so, there are some suicide communities that, you know, they're nihilist as fuck and tell you to do it. But when you find the right community with the right amount of people that are telling you the things that you need to hear, like, I feel like that that might be a little bit more personal than giving somebody your money. Well, if you give that a shot if you don't have the money to do it and if you do have the money to do it I actually kind of suggest seeing a professional over going to online because online at least going to a professional would be consistent advice I'm not saying go there and like look for attention and shit I'm saying like go there talk your piece on why you feel this way and you'll you'll and and nine times out of ten you're going to find somebody that (laughs) actually kind of clicks with what you're saying (laughs) but but if you really need help like if you absolutely need help, go to a doctor. Go to go to a psychiatrist. I'm not saying don't go to one. I just don't normally say. I, I feel like friends are all really need people that need to like. They're the ones that tell you go do that shit. And that's what I'm saying. Is that if you don't have that, you need a professional. You need a professional. Yeah, I agree. There's like there's like 40 seconds left on this video. Let's <laughs> let him let's let him have the rest of it. Yeah. Because I love you, Evan. We'll fuck it, yeah. Help. And I'm, despite being in a very rough situation and doing a lot better for myself than I was three years ago, you know. I, I agree. in the thick of it. So, um. <laughs> that yeah, I am I too. Mean, nature's going to be missed. But, um. I mean, there's really not a whole lot more I can say that I haven't already said. Um. So, I mean, you know. So it's a pleasure talking to you guys about this, especially because, you know, he was very influential towards me. So uh, I appreciate you guys having me on. Of course, dude. So if anyone else has a a band that really fucking influenced them and one of the members passed away and it really, really fucking struck you and you want to say your words, send it to us and we'll air it. We we will give eulogies. I'm actually down with having a eulogy segment for... Band members and people who have passed away. Yeah, that's fun. Somebody really means something to you has passed away. It's always worth. If you feel like if you feel like roasting them, we'll read whatever you want. <laughs> whatever you write down and tell us to read, we will read it. Okay. Did your grandma pass away? She didn't give you that cookie. Grandma's a bitch. Damn. Yeah. You gonna throw grandma under the Gra- bus? Well, no, she already got thrown under the bus. That's how she died. Uh, All right, so. <laughs> so I looked up some Russian folk metal bands. I sent them to you on. Facebook. Um, uh, okay. Well, why don't you get on YouTube and we'll just 
we'll just we'll just look it up. Nah, they don't need to see my YouTube. Okay. So. <laughs> Russian folk metal music. How are we gonna do this here? Should I pull it up on my phone? Just play it. Uh, Through the speakers. Okay, hold on. So pick. <laughs> Not, not that. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay, so pick one. Mm. Satana Kozel. Yeah. That one. That's Satan in the name. So yeah. Oh, then there's Troll Ben's Fear. It's got Troll in the name. Troll or Satan? Wait, did you just you just did that in like a German accent? Yeah, I know. Anyway, do you, uh do because Satan's always good. I hope they're satanic. They were fucking Christian, Russian, Orthodox shit. Satana Full album. Okay, here we go. Ooh! Okay, pick one. Banja, uh, this shit, or this shit? <laughs> Banja, because it's the only one I can say. I don't think this is the same. I, I'm gonna do this, because this is uh, yeah. Satana Did I just do a racism? This is a single. No, fuck it, they're Russians. Fuck. Goddamn. Fuck it. Did you got a bear? Why is there a bear? Oh, okay. Ding, 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 dong, ding. Oh, fuck. No way. Oh, it's gonna get polka in here. That's heavy. New favorite band. Okay, I can dig it. Ooh. Let's see how the vocalist sounds, and then I'll turn it off. That's heavy. I'm gonna listen to this on the way home, dude. I'm down. Solid. Oh, I've got the tongue. Yo, hold on, time out. You know who they already sound like? Hmm. Ailstorm. Ailstorm mixed with, like, Rammstein. Yeah. Or, like... Cannibal Corpse. Like Daft, D A A T H, that weird industrial band. Death. Yeah. Oh, they got the pan guitars going. Alright, I love them. Uh, they're great. 10 out of 10. Fucking Let's phenomenal. see if we can get them on the show. I hope they can speak English. Uh, probably not, but we'll get them on the show anyway. We'll yeah, have we'll a very, very broken conversation <laughs> with them. <laughs> Alright, so AJ just labeled this one as shit metal. Uh, is that the next one? Anyway, yeah, so we're gonna get out of the depressing shit because, you know, we don't wanna... We don't wanna bring it all down. You know, you know, I just realized something. Our first, vi our first video, like, two years ago, mm -hmm. started on a sour note about Charlie Murphy... Dying. Yeah, you know what? That, that was our first episode. That was our first episode. Uh, you know what else was our first episode? Hmm. Do not hit mein Führer. Do, Do not strike mein Führer. I said for our 50th episode, we gotta only react to compilations of our old fucking episodes and like go back over all the old shit that we watched. Oh, God. I think that'd be funny as shit. Oh, uh, God. I wonder if we can re-up on any of them. As long as the shit still exists online, we right, still so have we still have eight. We still have the eight hour show to talk about. The eight hour show that is going to be an epic endeavor. Uh, I just don't know when we should actually do it. Yeah, I, I think I think we should do it on a day that is cold as fuck. What episode number is this? Twenty seven. Uh, two seconds. Put a, like a little, put a little Jeopardy track over. Damn it. This is uh, episode 30. This is 30. This is episode 30. All right. Hell yeah. We're trucking along, man. Also, might have a very special interview coming up. Yeah. We're going to try to keep the bands coming. Now that we're back up and running here, we're going to really try to spice up the shoe. With I, did a lot cool. of, I did a lot of networking. Yeah. In uh, South Car or North Carolina. Yeah. All right. So, but right now we got a really shit band to show you. Oh, before we get into the shit band, though, can I say, uh, Canned has broken up. Oh yeah. Go ahead and. Get yeah. Beans. Well, you know, Ty decided that you know he's gonna, excuse me. They're going to take. Uh, they're going to take their talents to nuclear dissolution. Desolation. 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 I think it's a desolation. Yeah, desolation. Nuclear desolation. That was desolation. <laughs> nope. 
Nuclear okay, see, desolation. desolution. Um, <laughs> I like nuclear desolation. Yeah, they're pretty fucking good. I'm like, just going to miss Canned. Yeah. Man, I love my girlfriend. They'll be back. Like They'll, they'll be back. It's what not, a jam. Yeah. <laughs> it was such an honor to be able to play with Canned on so many righteous occasions. Agreed. What I an absolute them, honor. I I'm heard. sorry that I missed the Naked show, though. Uh, yeah, I am, too. I didn't get to see that The one. Naked Show was phenomenal. That was I, the show after I had to come back to Maryland. Um, I sent them a uh, picture of a four-foot Pringles can. I, yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, my. <laughs> mm. So, now let's get into this shitty metal. All right. Let's see how bad yeah, they actually guy, are. This guy kind of looks like Billy Denny. I haven't listened to this yet. Like, I heard, haven't? like, the first three seconds and I stopped, but I haven't, like, you know. All right, let's see how bad it is. He did not know how right he was. Okay, so my Fender Jaguar. That, That's his first mistake. And the drummer is using fucking a cardboard pearl. What? Why is he in fucking camo? That is that camo or is that like stars? I have no fucking. Your eyes are killing me. See. Why is this such why a is completely there a, different key? Why is there such? A, why is there a fucking forklift? You know that's not that's not that, no. See, I see what they're doing. They're being edgy because you can't smoke next to a forklift because it got propane on it. So like, look, and not only that, his cigarette's not lit. You fucking faker! A I am suing you. A liar. <laughs> Defamation. Look at the strap, dude. He can't even for look. He can't even fucking afford a a good strap. Duct tape that shit, fool. What are you Damn. doing? What in the fuck? Who mixed this? I need the slap of the... What does he have in his guitar? Is that a fucking, like... Is that a toilet cake? That's a good question. Is I have it? no idea what the fuck that is. You know what that probably is? That a sticker? Is? I bet that's the, uh... I bet that's a, uh... The, the table piece to a pizza when you first get it. Oh, wow. Why do you write? Yeah, that or he didn't take the fucking sales tag off of his Epiphone when he bought is that it. like leaving a sticker ago? on your Tillys? What key are you in? What are you? It's like, and then you're in like some other like, like what? Who? What? Why? What made you think this was a good fucking idea? Oh, this is me at it. That's false. He was trying to. He was trying to. Fucking falsetto. He's trying to. Oh, okay, so the, bitch. the drummer doesn't know how to break down, apparently. Why is he like, setting on his guitar? Is he using, like, a fucking... He's using a box, dude. He's using a box? Look, he's using a box. That is the shittiest fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, maybe we can get some good coming back. Well, this is a modular guitar. Oh. I don't have much... To, I'm sorry, I want to skip it, because I don't have much to say about these guys. And I feel bad ripping them a new asshole... You're trying, but, but y'all need yeah, to figure like, out what the fuck you're going for. You gotta, you gotta actually play good music before you make a music video. <laughs> and personally, like, don't whatever you're using to record, just 
Just don't. Like, honestly, set a fucking video camera up in the middle of the room, rip the audio off that, because whatever you're using to record sounds like shit. Better yet, just fucking put your laptop in the middle of the room and hit record. It'll sound so much better. The fucking webcam. Yeah, with a webcam yeah. mic. Alright, All so right. next. Oh! 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 oh. 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 That's a pick holder in his guitar. What a pussy. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yo, did he... What? What? Yo. Yo, did he just reload? So, I'm imagining it like an N64 cartridge where if you don't blow it out first before you <laughs> pop it in, it's gonna fuck your whole thing Remember, up. Remember, AJ, you're not supposed to blow inside of it because it'll make rust in the cartridge. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take a Q-tip, you're supposed to spray a little cleaner on it. No kid has it. time for that. Yeah, no, I'd have to blow into it. Oh, dude, that's heavy. That's pretty fucking awesome. How much do you think that guitar is? I bet you it's probably like the the fucking bass thing is about like six hundred bucks, and then every little clip on piece is probably like two hundred sixty or something. I bet you like a video game. That would be awesome. Dude, like, what if you... Dude, I, I bet you... What if, like, Electro Harmonics or something came out with, like, their own little fucking doodad thing for that doodad. and fucking made, like, the, the, the Mario cartridge and it just... Yeah, it glitches your guitar. It's like a fuzz pedal that glitches your guitar or some shit. Actually, somebody made a NES Telecaster. That's awesome. And it has a glitch, like, button in it. That's tight as shit. It's pretty hot. Look up how much that modular guitar is. Uh, what was the brand? Uh, Bear, I think it was. I don't fucking know. Ba, Boas. Boas. O-A-Z. Shit. B-O-A-Z module. Oh, it says coming soon on Indiegogo. Yeah, Boas won a 50 guitar. Yeah, they're not even going to release a price for it yet, I'm sure. But I don't want people to see how much it's going to be. Oh no, it looks pretty dope though, I'm not gonna lie. What is this one? Oh, they have a one single coil cassette, a three single coil cassette, and a humbucker cassette. Oh, so, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they, no price anywhere, of course. Honestly, you get a, like a single, you get that single fucking humbucker, and it's like a punk guitar at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking. I bet it has a built in kill switch, because if you only have like, if you have. More than one setting on your guitar? Hold on, let me look at this model real quick. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I think I'm wrong. Because, like, I don't think you can... Yeah, that's a good question, though. How are you going to... Oh, never mind. It's built in. I was talking about the... the um, that switcher. Thing, the switcher, yeah. Because if it was on the guitar... Could you imagine if the switcher was on the guitar and you... Plug in like the one pickup one, and then you start playing it, and then you fuck with the switcher, and it's just like an automatic kill switch, like fucking bucket. Oh my god, that'd be kind of dope. That would be kind of cool. I bet you could rewire it. I mean, somebody, dude, some fucking gear nerd is gonna have a time of their life taking that fucking thing apart. Truth and a half. Circuit bending that shit. All right, so next. Okay, so first off, we're gonna read this, and then we're gonna go on a drug a day. This is drug of the day. Oh. It's cot. Okay, well, well, let's talk about cot before. All right. You know, you know, when I first read that, when I first read cot, I thought of uh, the Kashit from from Elder Scrolls. Yeah. It's like, skooma. Cot. Would you like some skooma? Or cat. Cot. Quat. Um, Quat. It's Arabic. Uh, is follow is a flowering plant native to the Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Cot contains the alkaloid cathinone, cathinone. cathinone, cathinone. a stimulant, uh, which is said to cause excitement, loss of appetite, and euphoria. Among communities from the areas where this plant is native, cat chewing is a uh, history... Oh, uh, cot chewing has a history as a social custom dating back to thousands of years, analogous to the use of cocoa leaves in South America and betel nut in Asia. Oh my! Um, betel nut. WHO scroll up. Sorry. WHO uh, classified it in 1980 as a 
drug of abuse uh, that can produce psychological dependence, although the WHO does not consider cot addiction to be seriously problematic. So we can chew some cot right now. Yeah, let's chew some cot. Oh, it's a controlled substance in some countries and in our country. Just like coffee, you know. Yeah. Um, Djibouti. Djibouti. All right, so... Uh, Do you know, that there was a, you know there's a monkey called macaque? In Afghanistan, yeah, there's a monkey called Macaw. Could you imagine if he went on tour and went to Djibouti? <laughs> Yo, I gotta go see Macaw in Djibouti, dude. Jesus Christ! <laughs> um, ah! Ah! Fuck the nomenclature, uh, description, fuck it, I'm, cultivation. I'm trying to look for the fucking... health effects. Here we oh, go. Cot consumption induces cot mild... consumption. <laughs> Uh, induces mild euphoria and excitement similar to that conferred by strong coffee. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's enough of a fucking description right there. Individuals may become very talkative under the influence of the plant. Animal testing has shown that cot causes an increase in mo- uh, motoric activity. The effects of oral administration of cathinone occur more rapidly than the effects of amphetamine pills. Uh, can induce manic behaviors and hyperactivity similar uh, in effects to those produced by amphetamine. The use of cot results in constipation. Dilated, dilated pupils, pupils and the prominent and oh are prominent my bad are prominent during cot consumption reflecting the symptom uh, yeah. um sympathomimetic Symp- effects of the drug uh, which are reflected in increased heart rate and blood pressure uh, long term use can precipitate permanent tooth darkening for a greenish tinge of oh, greenish tinge that's uh, hot. susceptibility to ulcers and diminished and diminished sex drive so don't don't go too hard on it i guess yeah don't do cotton and fuck no 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 they're saying like long term use of cot 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 could diminish your sex drive it doesn't yeah. do it right away well do okay. cotton fuck cuz it makes you hyperactive it's like an amph- it says it's like an amphetamine pill. Yeah, after a while it'll... All right, so the immediate effects is alertness, arousal, so you really want to fuck. Uh, confidence, constipation immediately. Oh, my God. Euphoria, friendliness, concentration, increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, uh, insomnia, psychosis, Jesus. suppressed appetite, talkativeness, thought disorder... And verbose uh, verbosity. <laughs> but you're friendly. <laughs> Mike, I'm really constipated. <laughs> I love you, man. You know I man? can't shit. I'm telling you right now, dude, my life sucks a lot, but you are such a good friend. I haven't pooped in three days. <laughs> uh, Long term effects depression, infrequent hallucinations, impaired uh, inhibition. Inhibition? Inhibition, uh, increased risk of mitochondrial inf- myocardial uh, infarction. My- myocardial infarction. Oh, heart attack! Could have just said that. Uh, psychosis in extreme cases in the genetically predisposed, predisposed and oral cancer. Inner uh, inner determinant effects: death and stroke. Well, shit. Okay, so um, <coughs> seems like it's a mix of like. I Good and bad. Wise, it's like chewing tobacco and it's like coke. a coffee plant it's and like, meth. It's like coke. You just snort it once in a while, but not too much. Yeah, you know, kinda like coke. Chemistry. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, the stimulant effect of the plant was originally attributed to catin, caffeine, uh, uh, a phenyl, a phenyl, a phenyl. Okay, that's all. Uh, this substance that uh, history. Uh, Demographics. Okay, an estimated five to ten million people. <coughs> wow, that's actually surprising. It's grown by communities in the Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula, where cat uh, cot has a long history as a social custom dating back thousands of years. So, kind of like smoking. Yeah. Yeah, like you it's just, just like thing. chill out and on just chilling outside at a Seven Eleven, pop, uh, pull out your fucking cot pack and just chew a leaf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let's see what the history's about. I wonder if it's like chewing tobacco. Or like you chew on it and you decide to spit it out, I'm assuming. Yeah, I guess. What were you asking? History. 
Um, according to some sources, cot was first grown in Ethiopia, mm. uh, with the explorer Sir Richard Burton suggesting the plant was later introduced to Yemen from Ethiopia in the 15th century. Okay, he specifically mentions the eastern city of Harar as the birthplace of the plant. Okay, so go there for the real shit. Yeah. Uh, however, amongst communities in the Horn of Africa, Djibouti, Ethiopia, and Somalia, Djibouti. uh, and the Arabian Peninsula, cot chewing has a long history as a social custom dating back thousands of years. Ancient Egyptian imperial cults considered the cot plant a sacred substance. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Capable of realizing users' divinity. Oh, mm -hmm. shit. All right, keep going. Oh, hold on. Uh, keep reading that. The early Egyptians consumed the plant ceremoniously in attempts to transcend into apotheosis or garner and manifest mythical experiences, systematic trances, and other me metaphysical experiences rather than habitual recreational use or abuse. Hey, look, look, check it out. You miss your family? You miss your family a lot, right? Chew this motherfucker, you'll see him. Okay. Okay? You're good. All right, no God gave asked. us this plant. God gave us this plant, so you chew on it, and you go to the afterlife, but you'll come back. It's like a little... I can't poop. <laughs> Man, fuck all this melee. Um, recent opposition from some Catholics. Fuck that. Catholics oppose everything. Fuck them. And you know what? They're all over Africa and shit like that, so I bet you that's what the deal is. All right, Africa, Ethiopia, Somalia, Djibouti, Kenya, Djibouti, South Africa, Kenya. Uganda, Asia, Bangladesh. Oh, it's uh, illegal in... All right, it's illegal in Bangladesh. Oh. It's illegal in China. Cot is regarded as a dangerous drug in Kong, in Hong Kong. Uh, traffickers can face a penalty up to five million Hong Kongian dollars, <laughs> as well as life imprisonment. Israel, cat is called gat uh, in Israel. It's mainly consumed uh, consumed by Yemenite Jews. Okay. Uh, Indonesia. It is illegal in Indonesia. It is illegal in Malaysia. It is illegal in the Philippines. Uh, illegal in Saudi Arabia. It's legal in Thailand. Go to Thailand. Uh, it is illegal in the United Arab uh, em 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 Emirates. 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 Yeah. Uh, blah blah blah. Yemen. It is legal in Yemen. However, the cultivation and the crop and selling of the leaves are governed by a series of regulations, uh, as it should be. Um, illegal in Belgium since 2006. Illegal in Illegal Denmark. in Denmark since 2000, uh, 1993. Illegal in Finland. Uh, prohibited in Fran uh, prohibited in France as a stimulant. Uh, it is. I guess traffickable substance, which makes possession, sale, and purchase of fresh cod illegal. Uh, the derivative uh, caffeine, so it's like CBD here, you know. Okay, yeah, it's not it's not illegal, <laughs> but you can't traffic it. Um, yeah. Iceland, it is intercepted for smuggling thirty seven confiscated drug most likely. Okay, so I guess it is illegal. There's some leeway. Uh, uh, Ireland, controlled drug for the purpose of misuse drug act, 1977. Schedule 1 of the misuse, damn, 1988. As such, unauthorized right, possession. Fuck all, fuck all this. Prohibited. Yeah, Norway. How about Norway? Classified as a narcotic drug and is illegal. Okay, Poland it is classified as a narcotic. Illegal to use, sell, and possess. Illegal in Romania. Ill, it's prohibited in Sweden. Hmm. Uh, Without research, damn. Yeah. Cod uh, is illegal and classified as a narcotic in Switzerland. And the UK, last The one. UK... Illegal in 2014. Yeah. Fuck it. Jesus, hold on. America is, it has to be next. Nor, uh, it is a controlled substance, hey. Schedule 4. Catatone is a Schedule 1 drug. Placed in, so I guess it is illegal. Whatever. Anyway. Yep. Oh, my, in California, the plant itself, as well as catatone, the active ingredient, it are illegal. Okay. So, that's cool. So let's talk about a bitch that tried to get it through the borders. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Uh, U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers seized more than 175 pounds of the drug caught at Washington Dulles International Airport Dulles. Tuesday. The second such seizure at the airport in a week. 
A uh, CBP official said the drug had come into the country from Nigeria and were headed to Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, in total, officers seized 175 pounds and 11 ounces of Katha edulis known as cot. That's a lot of cot. Uh, the drugs had been hidden inside silver bags inside boxes of clothing. A uh, similar seizure last Friday caught 103 pounds of the drug on route to Florida. Jesus. Uh, of course it's going to go to fucking Florida. Yeah, East Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Damn. So, that's, that's a great. lot of cot. That's a lot of cot. 175. Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck, this chair sucks, dude. Yeah, this chair sucks, too. My ass hurts. Back hurts. But you know what? We're dealing with it. Yeah. Um, all right, so next one. We got FBI has found some pretty fucked up stuff. Uh, yeah. FBI finds bodies sewn together like Frankenstein and human shop shop. All That's right. kind of fucked. Buckets of body parts, a cooler filled with male genitalia, and a woman's head sewn onto a male torso like Frankenstein were found by FBI agents during a raid on Arizona Body Donation Center. A uh, new lawsuit reveals. Dude! A head sewn onto a male torso. That's crazy. Uh, a female's head. Yeah, holy shit. Uh, the stomach churning scene was discovered by FBI agents at the now shuttered Biological Resource Center in 2014 as a part of multi state investigation of the illegal trafficking and sale of human body parts, as reported by the Arizona uh, Republic. Oh, shit. Details of the grim find were revealed in a lawsuit filed against the center this week by 33 plaintiffs whose loved ones' bodies were donated to the facility under the guise they would be used for scientific purposes. What? Well, they weren't not I used mean, for yeah, scientific purposes. Maybe you know? evil science. Jesus Christ. Teacher sentenced to 20 years in prison for sex with teen student. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I see it. Sorry, it just caught my eye. <laughs> Damn. Um, Details of the grim discovered in his dedication declaration. Yeah, yeah here we go. Um, in his declaration in the civil suit, former FBI special agent Mark Quinar. 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 <laughs> fucking. Fuck? He sounds like a fucking lawyer. Dude, get a new name. He sounds Fuck like a off. lawyer, dude. Describe the various unsettling scenes that awaited cops, including a bucket of heads, arms, and legs, and a cooler filled with male genitalia. That's great. Agents also found infected heads, a small woman's head sewn onto a large male torso, uh, and hanging on a wall like Frankenstein, and body parts stacked on top of one another with no identification tags. Biological Resource Center specializes in the free pickup of deceased loved ones for families in exchange for their bodies to be used for scientific reasons. Dude, what if, what if, like, he did, like, a forced gender reassignment video? Holy shit. Dude, I bet you Cattle just bought a video off him and was like, yo, can we... <laughs> yo, can we use this? Can we use this? Is this okay? Snip. A 2013 price list included in the civil rights course file is a boy with no shoulders or head could be purchased for $2,900 while a whole spine could be retailed for $950. What? I want a spine. I want a spine. Uh, in 2015, Gore tearfully pleaded guilty to conducting an illegal... Gore. His name is Gore? What a perfect name. What the shit. fuck, dude? This... Oh, my God. Uh, tearfully pleaded guilty to conducting an illegal business after accusations he used body parts and ways that donors are not permitted. Oh, my Is God. He, was he... Was he fucking the bodies? Oh, he probably was. Uh, he was sentenced to one year of deferred jail time, four years of probation, in order to pay a hundred and twenty-one thousand in restitution. One year? Uh, 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 that's a lot gave, of money. Should have gave him fucking four years in jail and a year probation. At least it's a lot of money he's got to pay. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Fucking whatever. God damn, dude. I know. Like, sewing, sewing your loved one's body parts onto somebody isn't exactly retributional, but okay. You can't really rest, you can't really give someone a restitution. It's like, I'm sorry I tied your fucking girl, your girlfriend's head onto her dad's body. Fuck it, no. You can't do that. Go out of here, you stupid bitch. Oh my god. Oh uh, no. Sorry, right, we got another. We got a Georgia woman. A Georgia woman goes fucking crazy. Ape shit out. A Georgia woman 
got cold fries at McDonald's. Bitch, just said super size and fries. She pulled out a gun and fired a shot. What the fuck? I can see it now. Motherfucker, I got cold fries. What the fuck? Oh, my God, dude. A uh, Georgia woman is facing multiple charges, including aggravated robbery and armed assault, after she fired a gun to McDonald's floor because she received cold fries, according dude, to multiple reports. They're just fries, dude. Uh, the woman originally left uh, the McDonald's with her order on Monday afternoon, but returned and said her fries were cold. Quote, uh, dude, I bet you she left them right in front of the uh, uh, fan inside of her car. Yeah, and it just sat there for like... However long while she went in and got her groceries or some shit. And even if they are cold, dude, you're at McDonald's. Like you're gonna go there and it's you're gonna not be getting, shitty sometimes. Yeah, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get fucking gourmet food from McDonald's. Yeah, hey, what the fuck, man? You're Stupid lucky that ass. place naturally hangs on by a fucking thread. I don't even think it's like real potato they give you. I think I it's like corn syrup. Starch. Just pure corn syrup. Pure corn syrup and starch <laughs> with some like sponge. Shit. Um, but they're still uh, good. So the manager went to get new fries and the woman went in the kitchen. Dude, she was getting you new fries, you fucking asshole. Garden City Police Department Detective Roberto Rodriguez told USA Today the woman involved with the incident is 27 year old Lillian Chantel Tarver. She oh said an God. officer saw her leave the McDonald's in a car at a high rate of speed and she initially refused to pull over. Wow, this bitch is off to just like wreck her fucking life, dude. Yeah, she's a how does she navigate her daily existence? Number one mom. How did she make it this fucking far? Twenty-seven year old. Uh, Tarver surrendered a ten to a ten to fifteen minute chase. Uh, Rodriguez said uh, he said there was no injuries in the incident. He also said Tarver fired at the McDonald's, but didn't confirm it was because she was upset over the cold fries. I just don't want to deal with this McDonald's no more. Tarver was booked in the Catham County Jail and is being held without bond. I She's also over here. facing charges related to her driving away from the scene. I I, uh, I come over here. I come to the McDonald's every week. I come here. I get a ten piece nugget. You only give me nine. <laughs> I come over here, I get some fries, you get cold fries. I ask for extra sauce, they give me one fucking sauce pack, and they act like it's a terrible fucking process. Yeah, I ask for some honey mustard, and they just give me a roll eye, and I say, well, two's not enough, well, how many do you want? So I don't know, more than two, bitch. And it's like, oh, well, I can't give you more than two because it's against our policy. And then I'm just like, look, don't make me get my gun, because I will. And then they give me more than two. They give me the whole box. And, and I, I pull out my gun. And I pull out my gun, and I shoot them anyway, because they, it was... Even the they were giving me what I want, I still shoot them. Because my fries are cold. <laughs> I never forget. Never. Oh my god. You know what scares the shit out of me though? Is fast food restaurants and the sudden increase in that licking open boxes of, of things phase that's going around right now. You know those videos of people that like they open up ice cream and then lick it and then stick it back in the freezers? Oh, that's gross. No. Dude, you haven't seen it. Okay, so it's a viral trend. That. Dude, it's a viral trend right now and thousands of people have been caught doing it. That's so bad. No, no, okay, not thousands. That? I'm being hyperbolic. But like, a lot of people have been caught doing that. That's fucked. Why would you do that? It's a new viral trend of just... And... I mean, I remember back when I used to work at McDonald's, I used to... Uh, I used to steal, like, two or three chocolate milks out the back fucking storage and just drink them real quick, throw them behind all the boxes. Mm. But I never licked a motherfucker's fucking ice cream. Yeah. It's gross, bro. Dude, there was one of uh, this guy, what was he doing? He was, he opened up a thing of milk. He took the tab off a thing of milk, spit in it, and put it back. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. This, is why, this is why I'm not going to get the tabs. I'm going to... Get the op the crack open ones and make sure it don't get like that. Yeah. Fuck that. That's gross, dude. I don't even want to go over Fucking that shit. Disgusting. All right, let's go. I don't know what's the next one. Speaking so, of petty shit, Sims Four mod lets you square up with your toddlers. Dude, I have a whole new reason to download Sims Four now. Agreed. Holy shit! I kind of became disenchanted with the Sims, but you know, it might yeah, be. Sims fun Four after wasn't a long too time. bad. Like, I mean, when you put it down for a couple years, it's actually just, it's dope. I always had Sims for the console. I never downloaded it for the PC, but uh, there's a lot of good shit about the PC. The PC game. is definitely better than the consoles, mm -hmm. like especially the first Sims. Well, you can mod the shit out of the PC stuff too, mm -hmm. as evidenced by this. 
Can't get this on consoles. This quality content. Toddlers in the Sim Sailor series are generally annoying. They can't walk, talk, yeah, or use I the wanna, bathroom on their own. I want to just show the picture while you read it. Go ahead. And they'll keep adult Sims up all night uh, to boot. This mod now lets uh, now lets you show them how you really feel. The square up meme, an image of a woman attempting to fight a child, propagated on Black Twitter. Although now, like most images that are replicated for the sake of jokes, its origins have been pushed into obscurity. Uh, if you search for the origin of it, you'll only find screen cap tweets uh, artifacted. All uh, to all hell from 2015. Uh, the most hilarious example of this finding of this is finding it on a BBC News report about a Twitter hashtag about growing up black. This freeze frame is now just an exploitable picture that you can use to punctuate your reactions to opinions. Thanks to Ebony Simmer, you can further replicate this in your game, The Sims. Uh, Pose packs are prefab poses that are mainly used to keep your sims still for screenshots. Usually they're grand glamour poses, but this one is straight up hilarious. Check out the description in the mod. That's pretty good. Description is, I haven't seen the square up image in a good long while, but if the amount of fun I had staging this photo shoot is anything to go by, I think it's due for a resurgence. I mean, he's not wrong though. It's pretty funny. That's uh, pretty fucking funny. I mean, yeah, I like it. So you know what? Since we're on the topic of modding, didn't you say that there was like some glitch in Skyrim about the mannequins? Oh, dude. So yeah, I was watching this. Uh, uh, I don't fucking know what the channel was. Good channel though. Um, but they said that the mannequins. One of the everyone knows. It's no secret how glitchy Skyrim is. Mm -hmm. Like Skyrim is a glorified. It's great because like no matter where you go, you're always opening up to some grand scene, and it's always some vibrant color of either like some luscious like really reflective shades of gray or like brown and orange and like warm tones and shit yeah, like, like old, that. Old fucking medieval kind of style. Yeah. A lot well, of gray, a lot of gray, a lot of brown, a lot of bronze. The lighting all acts to accentuate the openness of the game and all this. Uh, but like, one of the glitches in the game, you know, sometimes you'll be fighting people and then they'll just like bounce up and be sitting like with their heads up in the fucking walls or yeah, whatever, yeah. or they'll sit down and push a chair and they'll just the chair won't move. Yeah, you know, kind of thing. Well, one of the fucking glitches is that mannequins are, like, program... How did he put it? The way that you described it to me was that the, the mannequins are programmed NPCs, yeah. but they're programmed to just sit there still forever. Yeah, that's what it is. And, like, they, they just... Their like, coding will break every yeah, now and then. Yeah, so you'll, like, start beating up a mannequin, and if you beat it up long enough, the glitch will set in where the NPC goes into attack mode and the mannequins will just fight you. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty dope. I mean, honestly, this stuff never ends, but it's a part of the game. Should it be buggy? No. Do Skyrim fans very much enjoy the bugs though? Yeah. Bethesda really are a lucky bunch. I have seen some incredible bugs in my time, but they certainly don't compare to the things I've heard of. Did you know that the mannequins in Skyrim are alive? Their norms, retextured and imprisoned in wooden skin, coded to be still forever. But sometimes, the code breaks. If I were them, I'd want revenge. Yeah, it's fucking wild. I like that. I like yeah, that. It was a lot. just creepy the way he said, like, their NPCs, like, uh, completely. They're just, programmed to. What did, I remember you said, you said they were programmed, programmed to. Be still forever. Yeah, something yeah, like be that. Be freeze framed forever, but if you break them, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So next up, what do we got here? Uh, driver cited for using beer cans is a fucking booster seat. Driver. I thought this was America. What well, in America? I thought this was America. In America, you fucking booster seat, man. I got fucking beer. 
What the fuck, man? Uh, Ottawa, Ontario, a driver in Canada. Oh, well, it's not fucking America, it's in Canada. A uh, fucking Ottawa, Ontario, a driver in Canada who allegedly strapped a toddler to a beer case instead of a car seat was charged with failing to properly secure a child, police said. Strapping, uh, a, strapping a beer case to a ch- toddler in a car seat. Thought this was Canada, eh? Thought this was Canada, eh? The thought 20, we had health care, eh? The t- the 22-year-old driver was pulled over early Tuesday around 2.30 a.m. in the Ville. Okay, lost all simp. Why are you going to have your fucking kid with you at 2.30 a.m. and keep him strapped to beer? That's, like, cruel and unusual. That's not smart. Yeah. Yeah, I would have laughed my ass off if this was Nova Scotia. Oh, my That's God. That's a Trailer Park Boys reference, boys. Ontario Provincial Police officers say the two-year-old child was also in the car sitting on a 30-can case of beer. Yeah, Wellington North driver was not a uh, who was not unidentified in order to protect the child's uh, privacy had allegedly put the case on the seat Wait, of his car. And struck not the unidentified. Too. Yeah. So like that link is the identification. I'm assuming. <laughs> Where they just dox him. Fuck it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's pretty fucked, dude. I I, I don't know. Like, you shouldn't really... The whole 2.30 a.m. thing is where I'm like... Yeah, that's kind of... Uh. What are you doing? Like, I assume you and took your two- kid out for a beer run at 2.30. That's what I'm gathering. But it's a, but it's also the fact that it's a two-year-old strapped to a case of beer. Right. Like, I, if, if it was like hurt. A, like, if it was a four- to six-year-old, I'd be like, eh, it's okay, because, like, maybe it's down the street, mm, you know, whatever. But, you know, buckle. <laughs> like, don't worry about the beard. Buckle your kid up. That's fucking kind of dumb. Uh, Any child weighing less than 80 pounds, standing less than 4 feet 9 inches tall, and under age uh, 8 must be secured in some form of booster child seat. Nah, fuck them. Yeah. Uh, Next! So Captain Morgan sales have been plummeting, apparently, because people have stopped buying soda as much. Well, they haven't really been plummeting because of me, because I still drink Captain Morgan. Dude, I was about to say, I'll single-handedly fund their fucking company, dude. Agreed. Captain Morgan sales sell 5%. Ah, I said plummeting. Fuck that. 5% during the 2019 fiscal year parent company. Diego told investors this week, Diego... Oh, no! A whole five fucking percent! Oh, no. How will I continue to not pay my employees fucking anything? Oh, shit. Uh, Diego CEOs. Oh, instead of buying the fucking uh, uh, private jet X, I gotta buy the fucking private jet two. Fucking yeah. A, why? A Alpha. Diego CEO Ivan Men- Menezes. Quick to Menezes. the insult jet. Diego CEO Ivan Menezes. Menen- Menezes. 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 Attributes the decline to sugary cola falling out of favor with consumers, meaning fewer drinkers of Cuba Libres made with rum and cola. Since 2012, Coca-Cola sales have grown by just 8%, while sales of flavored and carbonated water have grown 88%, according to a beverage market report. That makes sense, because everyone's finally realizing how much fucking sugar is in, you know, sugary drinks. So what do they do? They find flavored water, Mm because people, you know, water... But there's almost just as much sugary drinks and sugar in a flavored water, though. It depends on the flavored water. Yeah, yeah, but most people don't know that. They just look at it, oh, it's flavored water. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. the gist. I don't think we need to keep going over that. Um, American kids would rather be YouTubers than astronauts. I want to be a YouTuber. Why not be both? There was yeah. that one dude that did the fucking David Bowie cover in space. That's he, true. Fucking do them, do them both. Ground control to make you tall. This fucking mustache. Mom. Exactly 50 years ago today, a Saturn V rocket launched from Kennedy Space Center carrying Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins in the moon. Four, year, four days later, Armstrong and Aldrin would land on the moon and inspire a generation of young people to become scientists, engineers, and mathematicians. Uh... But not astronauts. <laughs> Shit, I didn't go to the full fucking article. Well, that was insightful. Wow, wow. But you know what? Okay, so here's what I'll fucking say about this. Can you honestly blame these kids for thinking that way when everything that's fed to them, all the people that they look up to, it's all about getting as famous as possible in as short of a period 
of time as possible. Previous generations, yeah, it was kind of like that. You want to be a star, whatever, whatever, whatever. But it was mostly about just fucking getting by or whatever, and you had, like, the working class areas and all. Well, this, it's all about going viral now. Mm -hmm. And that's all kids see is shit that goes fucking viral. Like that fucking Walmart kid. Yeah. Yeah, like, no one ever heard anything from him after that. Except for, like, he played a... Like, he played at a Super Bowl or some shit. I don't yeah, know. I, think, I don't remember. I think, yeah, he sang, like, one song for, like, the opening of some football game or something. I don't know what the fuck, but... Well, I was born a coal miner's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of upset by it, but at the same time, it's a product that of, of our society <laughs> that I knew all along, you know? Like, everybody wanted to... Everybody wants to get quit, get rich quick, but like <clears throat> my thing is that YouTube is so unreliable now when it comes to content creators that people actually that actually do want to work and be content creators and shit can't mm -hmm. because all the content creators that are getting the millions of views now and making all the money pretty much fucked it up for everybody. Did you know that the word lesbian is demonetizable? You know Rob Dyke? Mm -hmm. Rob Dyke, uh, he, he did the, um, I think it's called Strangely Awful. Or, no, the fuck was it? Seriously Strange. He did the Seriously Strange thing. You know Rob Dyke, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so recently he just had to change his name, literally change his last name. Not just on, fa not just on YouTube, but legally change his last name from Dyke to Gavigan because the word Dyke was getting him demonetized. That sucks. And, you know... <sighs> That's his last name, too. And it's not even spelled with an I. It's spelled with a Y. So it's like... It's an actual... Like, Dick Van Dyke. You know? Like... We are going to live in an age where a central focus is going to be the sharpening of social media algorithms to piece out information and that's a scary fucking yeah and, and thing one of the worst part one of the worst things one of the worst problems i have too is that like, like it's just it's his last name yeah you know? like it it that's what nobody I'm should that nobody should have to change their fucking name in order to do the profession that they want well, right yeah. now, the algorithm isn't sophisticated enough for them to be able to, like, bypass it in the algorithm. The algorithm just sees that and snaps. Just like how, no matter how you talk about lesbian, that term, just using it in your video, it doesn't matter what the context is, you'll get fucking demonetized. That's why no matter how what about gay? you are... Probably. Gay? Probably. I don't like... know. I don't know. But I know that the... I think it was the Surfs said that they did in kind of like an on-off test where they uploaded a video to YouTube, didn't get monetized because they said the word lesbian, and they cut that video out and then re-uploaded it without that word, and it was able to get monetized. Wow, that's some fucking detective shit. Good job, Surfs. I think it was them. I don't know if it was the Surfs, but... Yeah. If it was you, good job. But whoever did it, fucking good job, guys. I mean, I don't, I don't blame kids for wanting to be YouTubers because... Like, that's just what they're fucking, like, feeding into now. My nephew can't go to sleep without YouTube on. Yeah. You know, like... Yeah, and it's all, like, the influencers. Everyone wants to be big enough to be an influencer. Everyone wants to basically start their own cult. And I can't say shit because, you know, we're trying to get, like, a following and shit like butt that. Pussy. Show, butt pussy! Butt pussy! Like! Comment butt pussy. Like for butt pussy. The Podunk Punks cult is now accepting members. No, dude, it's the Church of Bedlam. The anyway, Church of Bedlam. Church of Bedlam is a co-signer of the Podunk Punks cult. Mm. Alright, so there's a new game coming out where you can actually play as a cat. This actually looks... I fucking hate cats, but this looks interesting. I don't understand why you hate cats. I fucking hate cats. You know, you're, you, you're going to get so much shit from me. We're probably going to get demonetized just for that. So, okay. Like, okay, let me put it this way. I... When I see a spider, I fucking hate spiders, but I pick it up and I let it outside and I let it live and I don't fuck with it. It's the same thing with cats. You telling me that you've been thinking about breaking cats next? No. Figure out what 
happened to the humans. Yeah, that's pretty neat. That's interesting, actually. The graphics ain't that bad. It's like WoW-style graphics. Oh, well, it's based in Maine, too. These folks... I like this game already. That's cool. I like it. I would totally play that. And there are a lot of games out there like that, too. The ones that, like, focus more on exploration and discovery more than combat. Because, like, uh, whatever happened to Edith's, Edith Finch is a good one. Uh, I haven't heard of that. That was a pretty good one. Um... Gone Home was alright. And then there was uh, Outlast. You don't combat in that game, you get chased in that game. Really? You know, it's more about discovery. Like, you, the only thing you have is a camera and night vision. Oh, shit. And if people come and run at you, you gotta hide. So it's more based on, like, discovery and, and uh, uh, puzzles and shit. That's pretty dope. I haven't played Outlast. It's pretty good. I, I you know... That's not bad. Like it surpassed its seven thousand dollar goal, so maybe we can get a little bit more um, umph to it. You know, like maybe the graphics will get a little bit better. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that the graphics look bad because they actually look pretty dope. But thirteen thousand. Keep donating. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. Nice hair. Yeah, it was like cotton candy on his head. Cotton candy on his head. Can I eat your hair? Can't wait to see how that comes out. Okay, so I, I'm i sure my girlfriend will want that fucking game. I'm going to want that. <laughs> I'll want that game. I'm your second girlfriend. True. So All my, right, so we got one more. So my girlfriend always says is that whenever I'm talking to you, get up talking to your girlfriend. Baby, <laughs> baby. So, Kraken. Big old squid. So, hold on. Pause it. You remember uh, that one fucking Bobbit worm video? Yeah. Tell me what you think is more like. Tell me what you would rather run into underwater. Go ahead. Well, hold on. Just so people can re refresh, the Bobbit worm is like the length of two people. Yeah. Right? And it digs underground. It's like seven feet. Well, it's like a person and a half or something. Yeah. Fuck that. I mean, that I, is a fucking horror movie and a half right there. Look at that some, shit. That's some Lovecraftian bullshit. Oh, God. Hold on, I think I've seen this hentai. <laughs> uh, I mean, Big cool. old cup of fuck now. Yeah, have you ever have you ever looked into Colossal... Uh, colossal Squids. Colossal Squids. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know how many more of them there are. Just, or... I mean, I don't know if they're... Well, that's the thing, is they're very rare to see, so... Yeah, I'll pull it up here. I'm pulling up the Wikipedia. I'm trying to, too. All right, the Colossal Squid, uh, sometimes called the Antarctic Squid or Giant Cramp Squid, is or the Kraken, is uh, believed to be the largest squid species in terms of mass. It's the only known member of the genus Mesocrypha. It is known from it's... only a few specimens, and current estimates put its maximum size at... 39 to 46 fucking feet. Yeah, those things are big, dude. God damn. Long, there's a picture There's a picture somewhere. Weighing up to 1,650 pounds based <laughs> on analysis of smaller and immature specimen, making it the largest known invertebrate. God damn, dude. Yeah, this one, this one was on display not too long ago. Look at that bitch. A big bitch. That was a big bitch. Looks like a lot of sushi. <laughs> it's a lot of fucking calamari, dude. I'd eat it. That's the earliest specimen they had in 2007. Fuck off. The species was first discovered in the form of two tentacles found in the stomach of a sperm whale in 1925. <laughs> Could you imagine being 1920, in 1925 and seeing a giant, opening up a whale and seeing a fucking tentacle like the size of this room? It says four meters long. Shit. Oh, uh, no, 14? they caught... Yeah, bad, they feet. caught. They caught one 13 feet. Yeah, they shit. They caught a large squid total of 13 feet long. That's crazy, dude. That's a big bitch. That's like... See, 
you see this guys this right here this region right here I, I, I guess you can't see it cause you fucking you fucking bullshit's trying to be bullshit stop it you know how they have see this, this giant see all that right there hmm. don't go there yeah, that's that's where it is. You know, what's that's actually that's actually where Cthulhu is too. Oh shit! Yeah, like they have a they have a. Go ahead, talk. I'm gonna. Uh, you know what the scariest goddamn thing in the world is? Huh. That little fucking beak that they have. That little fucking mouth. Yeah, thing. it's like a bird beak, but that it's is some not. mean looking shit. So, answer the question: What would you rather do? Be dragged to hell by the bobbit worm, or be fucking beaked at by that thing? Drag you down and beak you. I feel like the bobbit worm, you'd probably suffocate before you're actually eaten. Yeah. So, I'd probably say the bobbit worm. I'm looking for, hold on, I'm, I'm, because, like, uh, Lovecraft pinpointed Cthulhu's, like, exact position where Relath is... Mike's doing some sleuthing. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn with us. You're going to learn along with us. You all are here for the fucking ride. You know what? While he's doing that. Mm. Here we go. All right. Okay, cool. Awesome. So here is where... That one right there, Derleth. Okay. Derleth. That's where Cthulhu sleeps. The All great, right. The great one. Go there. See what happens. Pray. Bring, bring lots and lots and lots of priests. Because, like, in the book, he had actual, like, pinpointed coordinates that he wrote down. Somebody... And point at him. I need That's, to get down on some uh, Lovecraft mythos. Just read, read, read Cthulhu first out of all of them, honestly, or the or uh, into the Mountains of Madness. Okay. Because that one, that's fuck. Okay. That would be fucked. All right. So that's where the that's where yeah. See, because it's like right here, I believe. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. So yeah, I bet you it's guarded by fucking giant squids, colossal That'd be fucking squids. Fucking awesome. Imagine trying to get the Cthulhu and having to fight that fucking thing off. We'll get you, Cthulhu. Take a wizard with you. I'll get you, Gadget. <laughs> Alright, so I guess that's it, yeah? That's all we got. That a, is that's a one, two, three, uh, that's a one, two, three episode. Oh, about to be one, two, four. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, check out our everything. Yeah. I feel like I have to tell you. Donate to the you Patreon, you. fucking... Yeah, man, check out Vavik, this promotion. He's a, Evan's a cool guy. If you're Maryland local, pretty much DMV local, he'll, 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 he'll try to hook you up. Yeah, a lot of promotion, a lot of promoters are like, you know, oh, this promoter's dog shit, oh, this promoter got it, this promoter, fuck, I don't know, but this, this guy's pretty good. Yeah, everybody says. You ain't gotta worry about everybody it. Everybody kind of agrees that Evan's a pretty dope guy. Yeah. Um, what else are we missing? Um, Lineup? Should we give them the lineup for uh, for bands that we're going to nah. have on? Or, yeah, we'll, nah, just, right, we'll, we'll keep teasing. We'll keep that. All right. So uh, yeah, everybody, this is my nipple. Woo-wee. You can't see it. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Nope, nope, oh. nope. It's really sensitive. Huh? <laughs> Later. Huh. Thank you.